Hello and welcome, I'm Lee, the Music Reviewer. Um, I just got an email from um, Aunt Eileen, who's away on holiday um, just now, well deserved break if you ask me. Um, and yeah, let me just read it out to you guys, um, I'm sure you're all worried sick about them. Dear Liam, as I write this, I'm very sad. Our hotel has been taken over and leadership has been claimed by the benevolent General Crow. All hail General Crow and his glorious new regime. Sincerely, Aunt Eileen. Um, let's let, let's clear the air and uh, talk about some music. Let's let's do that. Um, specifically the latest release from uh, Jenny Haval, um, titled "The Long Sleep." Prior to listening to this um, release, um, I only heard um, "Apocalypse Girl" um, or 2015 album, which for me was again I've been kind of like I've been. Going back to my 2015 album of the year list, um, going through them and also going from any records that I missed out, I missed out on a lot because I wasn't as into looking for like the smaller names and all that. I'm really glad that I went to that album because um, just a lot of like ambient pop that's just absolutely delicious. Um, it's very kind of um, just skeletal, I guess the right word to use there, and um, just kept my interest. Right up until like the last kind of like sexual gas, like it's a very explicit album, I would say, and not in a case of like it's just constantly swearing or that. It's just like it's a very like kind of um, Jenny, just kind of like a very raw performance and just a very just um, open um, album. Um, I like that a great deal. Um, I haven't listened to Blood Bitch, um, which is the album that came out the following year. Heard really good things about it though. Heard it's a lot more kind of ambitious in terms of lyrics. What kind of it's more of a concept album. So definitely something I'm interested in, especially after listening to Apocalypse Girl and this um the Long Sleep EP. Um what do I make of the Long Sleep though? That's probably what you're wondering. And I think it's good. After your first listen to this EP um, you probably think to yourself that it is a lot more ambitious, at least in terms of like if you listen to Apocalypse Girl and then this. Um, again, I don't know for sure about <laughs> what Blood Bitch is like in terms of how production and all that have it's more ambitious. But for me, I definitely got stri- struck, stricken, striked by this. <laughs> Go for one of them. Um, where yeah, I just thought that it was a lot more varied throughout. Um, and just Jenny herself seems to be pushing herself um, a bit more, which is what makes this just a really, really good listen. Um, intro song, um, Spells, is just a really, really good cut of art pop brilliance. It just, it, it's really helped by how um, Jenny herself brings on some some like talented jazz experienced musicians here. I'm going to try and pronounce their names throughout this review. If I muck them up, I'm, I'm very, very sorry, sincerely I am. Um, because most notably there is Espen Reinerston who is on sax and his performance on this song specifically really taps into that sort of black star bleakness and then on the opposite side you get somebody like Anja Lovedal, again sorry if I pronounced that wrong, who ha- who's on um, keys on pianos um, and the keys that she hits out with are just joyous, just really light hearted and the way that these two songs or these the two elements of these, this song meet um, just mixes so well, it's just got such great chemistry and that for me um, just results in one of the most beautiful moments of this EP which in itself is just uh, an EP full of beautiful moments um, Jenny herself um, isn't left to the wayside, it's not a, it's not an album where like, the production is key like, Jenny is going for what I feel is a conceptual EP but doesn't go very one note throughout the whole thing um, vocals wise just a very mesmerising singer. Just I, I really can't put it in any other way. Um, just the way she kind of just like controls the song that she's in just has to be commended. Um, and the lyrical core here, like again, she is very good at trying to convey something here. And this EP in general seems to be conveying the whole, uh, uh, just how an artist feels when they make music. Um, their relationship with creativity. The songs here could be maybe interpreted as being like a relationship, like an actual like loving relationship. But for me, this album is more the relationship with musicians and their music, the influence they have, how they go about conveying stuff. It's really powerful and I feel that's what's gonna make this a really long lasting EP that isn't just gonna get like lost in the and just the the flood of all our music releases that you get every single day and it's gonna have like a long lasting appeal and for this song in particular it, it makes it sound like kinda of like a, a one side relationship where like Jenny's like really wishing for things to 
be good, like she's just basically begging. And yeah, that's kind of like, there's different stages throughout this EP where it's not just repeating the same thing, which is what um, I love about this EP. We then have the song, uh, The Dreamer is Everyone in Our Dreams. But who, who is, is the, the Dreamer? dreamer? Um, where was it? Oh yeah, um, The Dreamer, which seems to carry on this whole disco ball metaphor that you might notice once you've listened to this, um, which for me, um, try, I think it kind of addresses like a muse again with the whole like creativity side of things. Um, so this song seems to imply that Jenny has like, looked, looked for that muse, like how I assume a lot of creatives do, they try and look for something to inspire them, but she eventually finds that that sort of muse is inside of her. Um, and this, the two songs, um, like Spells and The Dreamer, seem to collide into one. Um, you just kind of get like a more kind of like timid repeat of the Spells um, refrain before we get like, just um, this just this um, this hypnotic repetition of the whole This is a Long Sleep, which is kind of like starting to build up. It's really hip, like I say, it's really hypnotic, but it's definitely starting to like get the listener prepared for um, the next song, which is the title track of the EP. Everything kind of just like culminates um, into this sort of just like meta for fall breaking moment um, from Jenny where she just kind of like has a sort of Christ over the effect that her music has, what she says and how she says it, which I found really smart. Um, it seems to be like an inner call for her to do less with more and that segue is just like beautifully into the title track which is like essentially like a 10 minute drone song. Um, when it comes to Jenny trying to do these like really long songs, again, just from my like limited experience, just from that one album, um, which was Apocalypse Girls finale, which was Holy Land. Um, for me, um, I felt like a song kind of meandered a little bit as it went on. Um, eventually, won me over though by the end. Um, but I think here, um, Jenny just kind of she did a better job. She was pushing herself out of her comfort zone, and with this new direction, like at least for her. Yeah, that whole scope she was going for was very exciting to say the least. It feels like this is as it is, like with the title being the long sleep. This is like the long sleep that the EP is alludes to. It's a very kind of very dreamlike. Um, it trying to just yeah, really like lulls the listener into that sort of like mindset. Jenny hardly speaks at all. Um, it kind of feels like the environment she's building with like the vocals. Um. But kind of like with like the wall, like kind of like maybe your balls at home, like instead of having like wallpaper or posters over it, there's just like these really like tiny bumps of paint on it, like they tell you something, and just that kind of like subtlety, I just find just really gorgeous. I do. I I feel like it would have been. It's very easy to go from being like subtle to so on the nose, and with how she does it with just her vocals, like you might not even be able to make out what she says until you look it up. But for me, that's not really. It's it's more it's kind of like more like a movie where like the dialogue doesn't appear, but the dialogue isn't the thing that's important. It's how it's what the characters are like how they're saying it, and I feel like that's the really like important thing with um, this song. The argument could be maybe made by some people the the production on here on this song specifically and the performance isn't that interesting that it maybe goes on a bit too long. I would strongly strongly disagree. It's all prepared expertly and the execution with that build up in mind, like the two songs that came before were building up to it, but those songs in there, like like if you were to look at them separately, are still good. It's like an extended universe where like this the films themselves are good on their own and what they build up to is also great. Um like obviously each to their own, but yeah, that's kinda like my my simile or whatever I'm going for here. Um, but yeah, there's enough progression going on, and what with the saxophone being brought in around halfway through, um, as well as some percussion from Kyer Lastad that um, fleshes out the abstract but gorgeous world that Jane's trying to craft here. Just hats off to her. Like, I was just constantly gripped by this EP. Um, I'm so glad I gave it a go because, again, wasn't too sure, no, recognise the name, but wasn't like, oh, I don't know if I should go for this, like, there's so much to listen to and there's lots of, like, stuff from other years that I'm, like, wanting to catch up on, but I'm so glad I gave this one a go because it just all culminates in this, like, spoken word bit, um, which isn't unusual for Jenny, but I just think this just is another, like, another tip bit of just variety here, like, we've had just drawing music, experimental slash art pop, electronic and jazz, um, like, just over the course, I don't know if I use my fingers there right my fingers are all broken just just like springing out for it springing out all over the place but um yeah just like over the course of those three songs there was so much variety being explored which made it never feel boring and it's only like a 20 minute long like ep like yeah the 
the the long sleep is like the longest song at about ten minutes. But yeah, it just it so much variety. It just made it feel even though like I guess I guess like kind of like a lucid dream where like so much is going on, or even just like a normal like sleep. But, like it just feels like anything can happen in that. But it's obviously trying Jenny trying to get into her own mind. Um, in this Pokemon song, it's just a lot. It's a lot of pondering on creativity again. That's just like I say, the whole core of this EP. Jenny just starts questioning the nature of her art, as if it's if it, maybe if it's genuine or if it's just a commodity, just to, like make ends meet. And that like with the line, "What am I doing here? Am I communicating? Am I promoting?" Um, again, could be a real worry for people because they have to like if you want to be an artist or a creative and like survive, like you are having to make these sort of like ethical, moral questions and that. Um, and yeah, she just goes on to say that the impact is regardless, um, it's not decided by one or two factors, like, you can't look at art and the creation of it so narrowly, like, it's not, like I said, it's not one or two things. She alluded to this earlier on in the EP as well, which is also quite smart, um, on the song The Dreamer where she says, I say it just needs that you contain multitudes, um, which makes sense to me, I don't know if that's just a bad translation there, but that makes sense, like, I get what is being said there. Um, I say translation, as in I think somebody on Genius hasn't spelled right, or maybe that's what she did say, um, but yeah, I, f I find that just, I, I really, it, it feels like everything's so interconnected on this um, just EP, um, I just had a great time from it, I cannot recall an EP from this year that I've had so much fun with, that when I when I first listened to it, I basically just, I had all the lights off, I had like, I had, I had the most calming atmosphere as I could, and yeah, it just it just ended up making my first listen so good, and I thought, oh, maybe I just got myself in the right environment. Listen to it while walking, listen to it while just like just on trains and all that. Still has an impact. Still such a meticulously thought out release that really has something to say. That when you maybe watch this review, maybe you were watching this review in a year to time, like or or, or in a, a year or two later. My, my, I'm, I'm, it's my birthday tomorrow. I'm turning 22. That must be like my final year from the looks of it because my brain's melting. But what I want to say is that this EP is really good. That Jenny Val is a very talented artist. That I will be going to check the rest of her discography now because this totally won me over. This is one of my favourite EPs of the year. If you have not listened to it, I implore you to give it a go because. I really think you're missing out. I really do think that. Even if you're not as won over by this EP as I have been, you'll find something that you like. You won't feel like your time has been wasted. At least that's the faith I have in this EP. Um, the Long Sleep, yeah, think I'm writing for it. I'm going to just go with my gut feeling here. I'm going to go for a light nine. I just think that it was a great time. As I say, it's got a lyrical core that's going to see this be a timeless just kind of release. Like, like I say, like you, if this, if you listen to this EP in 2019, 2020, like 2030, the whole, the whole topic of creativity is still going to be something that will be explored. And I feel in this way, I'm yet to see it being explored in this way. If there's an, if there's an EP that's similar to this, let me know because I'm all for that. But hats off to Jenny, did a great job. Thank you for just giving one of my favorite pieces of music from this year. Um happy to have been this positive about something because it's been it's been a while since I've been maybe since the Sophie album that was when that positivity was flooding out but I've been rambling on for about 50 minutes as my phone says um, but yeah as always guys thank you for watching and um, look out for the new podcast episode with um, Rick Delay on Friday where we talk about underrated artists and the Lego Island pizza guy um, as always, I've been Lena Music Reviewer. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. And, uh, and stay hydrated. <laughs>